Good morning. There we go. Welcome to St. James. I'm Pastor Dax Jordan. It is so great to be here. I landed late last night. I made it back. I was a little nervous about that, but uh, I am so, so happy to be with you this morning. We have a few announcements. Oh, the mic. You can't hear me because I don't have my mic on because I forgot to put it on. Yeah, because I took off my shirt because it was too hot. Anyway, um, I'm just going to, well, you know what? I can, oh, look at this fancy new mic that we have. I'll just use that. Fabulous. A couple of announcements uh, that we have. Poinsettias. If you want to buy a poinsettia for the Christmas season, we're going to be decorating, I guess, up front here. Uh, get that order in because they are hard to order. Uh, also, voters meeting. We have a voters meeting on the 12th, uh, and you have to sign up for that. So make sure you sign up for that. Also, the hanging of the greens. The date is wrong. No, what is the right date? It's okay. Oh, it is the right date. It is Friday. Nice. No, Tuesday, November 28th, 6 p.m. in the Narthex. We are dressing up the trees and all that fun stuff. So uh, that's what we got going on. All right. And then the rest of the announcements you can read, and hopefully you will be able to see those no problem. Okay. Let us stand. Let us begin this service in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Pass the peace to those around you. Peace be with you, brother. All right. Peace be with you. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In you, O oh Lord.
turning your faithful people of all times and all places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that together with them we may come to unspeakable joys that you have prepared for those who you love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Revelations, the seventh chapter, beginning with the ninth verse. Hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these? clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, who do you know? And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst no more, the sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from the first book of John, the third chapter, beginning with the first verse. Hear the word of the Lord. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as He is pure. This is the word of the Lord. We rise from the Alleluia verse in the reading of the Gospel. Thank you. 
funny illustrations or any stories to share with you. Um, what I came to in this passage is that this passage is very, very misunderstood. Um, when people speak about this passage, oftentimes they refer to the Beatitudes in a way that is so foreign to how it fits in the Gospels. In fact, the word Beatitude is nowhere in Scripture. It's not found in the Bible at all. Not the way most people think of it today. These eight blessings are not attitudes that you should strive for. They're not new laws for us to follow. The whole original etymology of the word in English, Beatitudes, comes from the Latin phrase, Beata sunt positentis. That is, blessed are those who possess. You already possess this. And I'm acknowledging that this is a blessing. It's not something you strive to become. It's not like if you were really, really humble that you would inherit real estate. It's not what it says. Another unfair interpretation of this section is that it's somehow a standalone passage, right? That you can just extract the Beatitudes out of the Sermon on the Mount, frame them up, and put them on your bathroom wall for you to read in the morning. That's not what it's there for. And that's not what these Beatitudes are about. Apart from the rest of the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes are hard to understand. They don't really say much apart from the whole sermon. Okay, fine, Pastor. Then what is your take on the Beatitudes? It's not my take. It's what the passage says and where the passage is leading you, the listener. Jesus opens his mouth and he starts with this grand introduction to his sermon. He wants to put all the cards on the table. I did not come to abolish the law, he says in his sermon. I came to fulfill it. You have probably heard that I show grace to others. And you think that waters down or lessens the law or the consequences of the law. Oh, quite to the contrary. Then Jesus goes on with the, you have heard that it was said. Right? He introduces his phrase by that. You have heard that it was said, you shall not murder. But I say to you, if you are angry with your brother, the type of anger that says, you are dead to me, which many of us have said to another, that kind of anger, you have brought the same judgment upon yourself because you have killed that person in your heart. In the same way, caught in the act of adultery? Never? Oh, look at this. Looking at another in lust, with lustful eyes, is committing adultery in your heart. If someone sues you, give them the shirt off your back. If you have a grudge, leave your, altar, leave your offering at the altar and go make amends first. I'm not telling you that grace, uh, uh, that the grace that I show negates the letter of the law. Quite the contrary. I'm saying your intention to harm another in your heart is just as bad. <laughs> that every act of sin starts with the hardening of the heart. Wow! How can anyone live up to that? How can anyone live up to that high standard? It's too much. By the law of Rome, no one. By the grace of God and Jesus Christ, everyone. Think of what a blessing it is 
that we have Jesus in our minds. Think of how great it is for you to attempt this higher standard of love without perishing, without being disappointed, without falling short. Think of how powerful it is to witness Jesus Christ fulfilling God's law perfectly to the letter and loving others completely, accepting others into his community. We as followers of Jesus Christ participate in this great love. We join in this great love with him. We love as he has first loved us. Now let's read the Beatitudes with those eyes. Hey, you people who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Oh, you see bad things happen all around you. And you wish it were better. Oh, just you wait. You will see it all play out in front of you. Don't worry. God's perfect righteousness will be played out in my life, death, and resurrection. Justice will be once and for all completely served. And your redemption, your reconciliation with God will be completed through me. Those of you who are bummed out, poor in spirit, sad, and persecuted for this righteousness that I have described, don't you worry. The kingdom of heaven is your home. The people of God are your forever people. You peacemakers who mend the world's division with God's grace, you will be known as the children of God. The merciful, the meek, will be shown mercy. Jesus teaches them, Forgive us our sins as we, in equal, in equality, as we forgive those who sin against us. But those who live by the sword of revenge will die by the sword. Those who fight over the land will eventually lose it. Wow, doesn't that speak to the headlines today? Blessed are you when others revile you and reject you and call you all sorts of false things on my account. On account of my gospel message. Rejoice in it. Don't worry. They despised God's word just like they did back in the days of the prophets. They don't see God's word for what it is. They don't see God's complete story 100%. But those of you who see God's whole picture 100%, you will see God at work in this world. That's what pure of heart is. I always was frustrated as a kid about the pure at heart. I thought, I'm not pure at heart, I'm a sinner. And I would get so bothered by that that I would not see God. But in truth, being pure at heart is being all in, as it says in the prophet Jeremiah. When we are all in, 100%, we see God. And you can see why that's pure, right? If you think of purified water, it's 100% water without any additives. We are truly blessed the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. It is Christ who makes us pure. It is Christ who leads us. Christ has arrived through his word made flesh, through his unmistakable character and witness. We like his disciples, we recognize him. We see him for what he is the Redeemer of the world. Think about this. Love your enemies and be kind to those who hate you? Where does that come from? What human being would ever create that statement? Who teaches this in the world? What culture or community would support such an idea? It goes so 
contrary to survival of the fittest, to most every culture that's ever lived, runs contrary to our nature, which we know as Christians is our sinful nature. But when the community of Jesus Christ speaks and acts in his name, through his word, when we truly operate as the body of Christ, that God's word has formed, the world is truly blessed. We see the work of the Savior in the world. And we rejoice in it. Amen? Our hymn of the day is for all the saints. And I think this is another hymn that we should stand for. What do you think? All right.
Gracious and loving God, we are so thankful for the 176 years that you have sustained this church and all the saints that have gone before us, the church that you have built, that we have inherited. Help us, Lord, be committed to a future generation so that this church would last in this community from generation to generation. Lord, we pray for the world in all of its unrest and division and strife and wars and rumors of greater wars. Gracious God, help your word bring peace on this earth. Gracious and loving God, we pray for those who have departed and gone before us. Marianne Schmidt, David Miller, Ken Nickel, Carol Butler, Frankie B, Eugene Bay, Caroline, Ethan Cook, Rosie Hickok, Bob Johnson, Alicia Leha, Michael McFarland, Darlene Funes, Ed Sarno, Jacob Stratton, Ivan Rausch. For all of these saints that have come before us, we ask that you bless them in your bosom, in your kingdom, as you have promised. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all whom we pray, trusting in your goodness and loving kindness forever and ever. Amen. Now we pray as our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Yeah. <laughs>